hold on. Before we get started, I want to find out why you came to this assembly. I know why the teachers want me here. I know why the school wants me here. I know why the Alks want me here. But I'm curious why you're here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you three different questions. And if you would please honestly clap for the reason why you're here, I would appreciate it. Okay. Reason number one, how many of you are here because you're dying to get some good information about drugs and alcohol to make a good decision in your life? Go ahead and clap. Okay. Right. Good. Nice. How many of you are here because you're dying to get some good information about drugs and alcohol, maybe to help somebody else out? Go ahead and clap. That's why you're here. Oh. Okay. And last but not least, how many of you are here because basically you're just glad to be out of class? For about a It's always funny to see the teachers clapping. That's why I'm here. Get me out of class. My name is Ray Lozano. I do get to travel all across the nation with the Elks talking about drugs and alcohol. I live in the uh, California area, so if any of you have ever been out to Los Angeles, that's where I'm from. And uh, I'm always curious about this. Being from California, I'm Mexican Hispanic. Any other Mexican Hispanic kids here today? Oh my gosh, nice. A couple of you, good. Good, thanks, yeah. <laughs> nice. A little bit. Well, being Mexican Hispanic, when I was born, my father gave me a middle name that's about that, sorry, probably about that long. I never have them introduce me by it because they always get it wrong. My full name is Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintano Lozano. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> thanks, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintano Lozano. You know what I find when I come out here to this part of the country? People have trouble making this sound. Go and try it. See? Right. Who cannot? Who cannot make that sound? Can I, oh my gosh, yeah. Hands down. <laughs> All the kids going like this. Blah, 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 right? They got spit all over their shirt now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you guys a chance to try it out. Here we go. Everybody say Ray. Get ready, here it comes. Enrique. Eduardo. Quintana. Quintano. Lozano. Lozano. Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintana Lozano. Uh, there were times having that name was fun and terrific. Times when it was terrible. You know when it was terrible having that name, you guys? Do you remember kindergarten learning to spell your name for the very first time? <laughs> and your letters were that big, right? I knew I was going to be there all day because it was like, Ray Enrique. You know, <laughs> whenever I finished that, it looked like a homework assignment, you know? I'd put it on the teacher's desk, I'd look at her in the face, and then I'd say, staple it, don't drop it. <laughs> you know when it worked out super great to have that name? Anybody in this room ever have your mom and dad get mad at you and call you by your full name? Who's had that happen? Oh my gosh, right? Hands down. Everybody that put your hand up, think how far you could run with a name like Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintana Santa, right? If I got in trouble right here, my mom started to say my name, man. I could be out that door across the street hiding underneath a cow before she'd hit me with that chunk law, right? So that was worked out pretty good. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I love being able to travel around talking about drugs and alcohol. I do. I know it sounds dumb, but... I love doing this, love doing this job. I love that the Elks bring me out. I love that we... But we try to make it really interesting. Here's why I do what I do, okay? The reason why I do what I do is because I, drugs and alcohol, I hate when it takes stuff away from people. And the Elks believe this, the school believes this, I was talking with your principal, she believes this. There's something amazing in this room. The kid that's going to cure cancer might be in this room right now. 
or the, the student that's going to get fresh water to third world country might be in this room right now, or somebody that's going to make some new kind of energy that's going to save the planet is in this room right now, but the problem, drugs and alcohol take that away from you all the time. They do, and I see this happen time and time again. Let me show you that amazing skill that has been given to you, okay? Some of you are going to be able to clap, some of you won't, but everybody will have a chance. This first one, I cannot clap on, clap at, uh, at all. Here we go. Your amazing skill. And these are the very first thing drugs and alcohol will take away from you. By a round of applause, how many students in this room are really great at playing some kind of sport? Go ahead and clap, You're great at playing a sport. Nice. Nice. Right there. Future athletes. If you start doing drugs and alcohol, that gets taken away from you. By round of applause, how many people in this room are great at playing a musical instrument? Go ahead and clap if you're great at that. Right there, future musicians. If you start doing drugs and alcohol, that gets taken away from you. By round of applause, how many people in this room are great at numbers? You love math. Go ahead and clap if you're great at numbers. All right. Nice. Right there, future engineers, future architects. Start doing drugs and alcohol, that gets taken away from you. By round of applause, how many people in this room, and I'm a little, little nervous to ask this one, because I think I got about 10 or 15 of you picked out. How many people in this room are always getting in trouble for talking way too much? Yikes. <laughs> Teachers are wiping tears from their eyes right now. <laughs> I love the kids that clap and talk at the same time. Look at me, I'm clapping. <laughs> you guys, that was me. I was the kid that did not know how to be quiet at all. If I was in this assembly right now in your grade, when I walked in that door, somebody, one teacher would have talked to me without a doubt. My favorite seat was always a seat, or not, maybe not my favorite, was the seat right next to the teacher. That's where I had to see, sit all the time. But I'll tell you what, I had a teacher that saved my life, totally saved my life, Mrs. Lyons. Sophomore year in high school, I'm sitting in class, and I'm making all of these kids bust up. Where's, where are those kids at that make everybody laugh, right? Yeah, okay. Quite a few, wow, quite a few, all right. So I am making, I'm making all of these kids laugh over here in class, totally wrong time, totally inappropriate time. I'm making them laugh so much, I, Mrs. Lyons comes over to my desk and she puts her hands on my desk and I'm still chattering away. I turn around like, whoa. I look at her, she looks at me and she goes, Ray, she says, you're gonna get in trouble with all that talking. I looked at her and I said, yes, Mrs. Lyons, I'm well aware of that. Give me detention, let's keep rolling, you know. And she says, no, no, she says, you gotta do something with all that talking. She says, you tell a pretty good story. She literally walked me out of class, took me to the theater department right there, looked at the teacher and said, this kid's in your class now. He's got way too many words from him, get these words out. Years later, I've been doing this job for a long time, years later I was so excited, I had to tell her what I was doing. I found her on Facebook and I called her up and I said, Mrs. Lyons, Mrs. Lyons, I says, do you remember me? And she says, no. <laughs> and I says, Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana, and she's like, oh yeah, 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 I remember who you are, right? I says, Mrs. Lyons, I says, you'll never believe what I do for a living. She's like, what is that? I says, Mrs. Lyons, I gotta tell you thank you, because I make a living out of talking right now. Students, I get it. All my little talkers in the room, I get it. I get why you talk, because that was me. But if you learn when to talk and when not to talk, it can get you all the way around the world. Doing drugs and alcohol, that'll take it away from you. Where's all my artists in the room? Where are the people that are great at drawing and doing painting and stuff like that? Nice. Awesome. Cool. Future artists right there, you never know where that'll go. That creativity comes from deep within you. You do drugs and alcohol, it gets taken away. Where's all my video game players at? Who's great at playing video games? Wow. Nice. All righty. 
Video game players, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Here we go. The future <laughs> belongs to you guys. It does. It does. My wife, my wife used to work at Loma Linda University Medical Center, a major hospital, Southern California. This is where any president would go if they were in Southern California. Cutting edge hospital. A patient came into the emergency room and they call this patient a one percenter. What a one percenter is, it's somebody that needs an operation that hardly anybody in the world needs. The hospital looked all around the world for, in their sister schools for a doctor that could perform this operation. They found a doctor in China. When it came time to do the operation, they did not fly the doctor from China to the United States and they did not take the patient from the United States to China. What they did is they put the patient in an operating room with two nurses and above him was like a 3D printer. That's the best way I can describe it. The patient laid there, they knocked him out. The doctor that was performing the operation was in China. He pulled down these virtual reality goggles and they said it looked like he was just playing a video game from his end. If you looked at him, it looked like he was playing a video game. He performed a successful operation from China in the United States and they said it looked just like a video game. Video game players, get your education, keep playing games, don't do drugs because it'll go somewhere. All right, please be honest with this one. Where's all the people in the room? If I gave you $20, you could hold on to it he had $80. Where's my money savers at? Right? Nice, nice. Right there. Future investors, if you are good with money and you start doing drugs and alcohol, that gets taken away from you. Where's all the people that are great at spending money? Nice. Nice. Future broke people right there, man. I, I have no idea what you can do with that at all. None. You guys. Whatever is going to make you amazing in life, drugs and alcohol will take it away. Students, please hear this. Do not clap at this because it sounds terrible. Just silently raise your hand. Don't even goof around. Don't clap at this because it sounds terrible. Teachers, please participate in this as well. Let me show you the other side of drugs and alcohol, the sad side. Okay? In a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you know this kid, have heard this story, maybe he's even a family member or a friend. How many of you have ever heard this story? Kids really great at school, starts drinking alcohol or smoking weed, now they're close to dropping out or they did drop out. Who knows that story? Ah, oh. That's terrible. Hands down. How about this kid? Really great at playing some kind of sport. Looks like they're going to be amazing. Starts drinking alcohol, smoking weed, now they don't play that sport anymore. Who knows that kid? Students, look, every, every one of your teachers has their hand up. Hands down. How about this kid? Really close with mom and dad, they get along great. Starts drinking alcohol, smoking weed, using an e-cigarette, a jeweler vape, and now they don't get along anymore. Who knows that kid? There it is. Hands down. You guys, understand this. If you do drugs and alcohol and that happened to them, it'll happen to you. I've seen this happen time and time again. Kids that were gonna be amazing and all of a sudden they lost this thing that's amazing to them. Miguel Sanchez. I actually hate this story, I don't know why, but, but Miguel Sanchez, the reason why I hate this story because I know this kid so well. Miguel Sanchez used to come over to our house all the time for breakfast. Started high school with my son and daughter. Used to come over to the house about three or four times a week for breakfast. This was Miguel Sanchez, great at sports. This kid was designed for running, loved to run. I hate running, right? <laughs> Even if these curtains catch on fire, I'm walking out of here, right? <laughs> now they may say there's tacos out there, I'll jog a little bit, but I'm not running, man, not at all. Mm -mm. Miguel Sanchez loved to run. Miguel Sanchez, school came easy to this kid. His freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I did not see Miguel carry one book with him home at all. Straight A's all the way across the board. He was that kid that like, well, oh, I didn't get a chance to study. I'm not gonna do good. Bam, A, that was Miguel. If I brought Miguel Sanchez into this room when he was in high school, I, I would safely say 90% of you would love this kid. He was amazing. Freshman, sophomore, junior year came over to breakfast. Senior year, Miguel stopped coming over for breakfast and I asked my daughter, she says, honey, what happened to Miguel? 
She goes, Dad, this is going to kill you. And I'm like, no. She said, he started smoking weed. I'm like, man. I said, did you talk to him? She said, yeah. I said, what did he say? She said that Miguel Sanchez told her the same thing every kid that I've ever worked with that smokes weed said the same thing. It's just a little weed. What's wrong with that? I'm just vaping a little bit. What's wrong with that? I'm just drinking a little beer. What's wrong with that? Every kid's always told me that. Miguel Sanchez did not come over to the house. Smoking once a month turned into smoking three times a month, turned into smoking five times a month, turned into smoking three times a week, turned into smoking weed every single day. When it came time to graduate, somebody shout out. What do you think happened to Miguel? He died. No. <laughs> he didn't gra uh, yeah, he didn't graduate. No, he did graduate. Right. You know what happened to Miguel? Nothing. Nothing happened to Miguel. When graduation night came, Miguel Sanchez, we were in the audience, Miguel Sanchez walked across that stage, got to the middle of the stage, held up his diploma. There must have been 900 kids in the audience, another 1,100 adults, and we all screamed for Miguel. Miguel walked off that stage. At the bottom of that stage, the University of Redlands, private university, looked at Miguel and said, Miguel, we want you to come to our school. We want you to come to our school so bad, Miguel. We're going to give you a $200,000 scholarship. Miguel, all you got to come up with for a four-year degree is $36,000. Miguel took that scholarship. Between his senior year of high school and freshman year of college, all Miguel did all summer long was smoke weed. When it came time to go to college, his first year, Miguel didn't do so well. And I'm not even going to blame that on the weed. But the second year when Miguel should be doing super good, he ran into this little problem. They were going to drug test everybody on the, soccer, on the uh, track team. Miguel Sanchez had a choice. Do I stick with this school that gave me $200,000 or do I pick weed? What do you guys think he picked? Weed. Miguel Sanchez dropped out of a four-year university, handed the school back about $140,000, and he dropped out. You know how I know this story, and this is the part that makes me sad. Me and my daughter were having one of those days that's just amazing, super fun. We are going to lunch, and we crack open this door to a Subway sandwich right there by our house. We look up, and there's Miguel Sanchez with a little paper hat on. He looks at us. We look at him. Now, working at Subway is not a bad thing, but for a kid that had a $200,000 scholarship, painful. He made our sandwich silently, wrapped it up, and he left. My daughter went back and talked to him about a week later, and Miguel said something that actually made me feel pretty bad. Miguel told my daughter, he says, tell your dad this. Everything he talks about is so true. He says, when I was sitting in the audience listening to your dad, he thought inside his head, I'm going to be the kid that's going to be able to smoke weed and be okay. He says, but I lost the thing that was going to make me amazing. He says, I don't even run anymore. I just make sandwiches. You guys, drugs and alcohol, take that away. For you guys inside this room, two big ones you're going to encounter is alcohol and vaping, e-cigarettes, and jewels. For you guys, these are all detrimental because your body isn't even fully developed yet. Let's say I had a can of beer in my hand, pop it open, glug, 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 and drink it down. In a second, somebody raise your hand, tell me how long do you think it takes for that alcohol to go from my mouth all the way down my esophagus into my stomach, large and small intestine, penetrate the lining of that, go into my bloodstream, and finally make its way all the way to my brain. How long does that take? Somebody give me a number. Yes. A few minutes. Get like five minutes? Let's start with five minutes. Great number, great place to start. Actually, that's too high. Let's drop it down. Yes. A minute. You're getting super close, but we're actually still too high. Yes. 25 seconds, you missed it by five. Yes, 30 seconds, round of applause right there, 30 seconds. All it takes is 30 seconds, a little bit less time than it took us to do that, is how long it takes for alcohol to go from your mouth to your stomach, penetrate the lining of your stomach, go into your bloodstream and hit your brain. Now, as soon as alcohol hits your brain, your brain says this, whoa, this is a poison, I gotta get this out of here. So it starts to change the way that it works because it realizes that alcohol is a poison, got to get rid of it. It gets rid of it three different ways. They all begin with the same exact letter. If somebody were to drink a whole bunch of alcohol using that very first letter right there, they will? P, P is correct, yes. 
That's the only time you'll be able to shout out P in school and have it be the right answer, right? Yeah. If you drink way too much, you will? Puke. Puke is correct. And if you drink way too much, you will? Yeah. I heard it. Who said poop? I heard it, right? Yeah. It's always the guys, right? Sickos. But anyway, yeah. It is not poop. That'd be way too weird. Pass out. P puke and pass out. These are three different things that are taking place whenever you drink alcohol because your body, your brain is attempting to save you. Peeing, puking, passing out. Somebody drinks really hard on a Friday night. Saturday they wake up, light is too bright, sound is too loud. They have this crazy headache going on. They can't make a decision. They feel terrible. Their mouth, ah, tastes like they found a dirty diaper on the side of the road and tried to eat it, okay? What is that terrible flavor called, or what's that terrible feeling called? Hangover, yeah, or tequila. Either way, it's the same thing, right? <laughs> now, the reason why people get hangovers and feel terrible when they drink is because their brain has realized this is a poison, I gotta get it out of here. So what it does is it uses a lot of water to flush that alcohol out. The reason why you get a whole head headache is because right now all of us have this thin layer of water that surrounds our brain, keeps it from banging around in there. When you drink alcohol, that thin layer of water that surrounds your brain, your brain actually evaporates and your brain shrinks a tiny amount, pulls away from the inside of your skull, that's why your head hurts. Puking, once somebody starts to puke out alcohol, what the brain is saying is, wow, this is too much alcohol. What is the quickest, fastest, easiest way for me to get this out? I will bleh, puke it out. Now, when I worked in the emergency room for a number of years, I have discovered the very worst food a human being can puke out. 19-year-old kids drinking five feet off the ground on a bridge. He's eating this food item, drinking, eating, drinking, eating. About 11 o'clock, this 19-year-old kid's so drunk, he falls backwards off this bridge, lands flat on his back on cement. His friends call 911, 911 pick him up and they strap him to a backboard. Not like that kind of backboard, but you know what backboards are. They had a strap around his ankles, his knees, his waist, they had his hands crossed like this, a strap really tight on his arm, foam sea collar on his neck and they duct taped his head to the board. Now if you ever get put on a backboard, you can blink and breathe, but that's about it. Bring him into the emergency room. I'm down here by his feet, three nurses, doctor working on his spine. 19-year-old kid looks up in the air and he starts screaming, I'm gonna puke, I'm gonna puke. Doctor says, good, let's get that off. He goes, I don't wanna puke. Doctor looked at him, he says, why? He goes, cause I'm laying on my back. Would that be a terrible way to puke? Yeah. Yes. Doctor said, don't worry about that. Three nurses grab this backboard, they slide it up to the edge of the bed, they lock it in these hooks, they grab the board and they tilt it up. But here's what's crazy. They don't tilt it up this way. <laughs> they tilt it up this way, sideways. I'm watching a 19-year-old kid laying sideways on this emergency room, life or death situation. Nurse slides this huge garbage can underneath him. 19-year-old kid goes just like this. He goes, I'm gonna <laughs> puke. Doctor says, good, let's get that alcohol out of you. He goes, I don't wanna puke. Doctor looked at him and said, why? He goes, man, because I've been eating blah. Worst thing to vomit out of your mouth and nose? <laughs> Flaming hot Cheetos, right? <laughs> I'm watching a kid vomit flaming hot Cheetos and alcohol at an alarming rate into a garbage can. I probably shouldn't even tell you this part of the story. The only thing I could think of in that emergency room was, man, <laughs> wish I had my phone. Because <laughs> I would have videoed this whole thing. I would have stuck it up on YouTube, but I would have run the video backwards so you know what it would have looked like, right? I would have called the video, Taste the Rainbow. <laughs> when somebody drinks so much that they pass out, this is where it starts to get really dangerous. This is where the brain is saying, I have to stop alcohol from coming in. This is going to be a terrible drawing of your brain right there, okay? Now, oh, thanks. Let me show you this. And this is why alcohol, e-cigarettes, jewels, and vapes are so dangerous for you guys. Everybody make the letter C pointed toward your head just like this, okay? Just point it toward your head. Now take it and put it directly over your forehead. All right, feel that, okay? Right underneath that skull right there is a thing called the frontal lobe. Go ahead and put your hands down. Frontal lobe. 
Now, students sitting in the chairs in the bleachers right now, you are going to disagree with this, but all of your teachers are going to be like, yes, that is 100% true. For all the students in the room, that frontal lobe isn't even working yet. It is not. You feel like it is, but it's not. For all the young ladies in the room, that frontal lobe part of your brain does not start working until you're 21 years old. 21, right? For all the guys, <laughs> 23, okay, yeah. <laughs> so guys, you get two extra years of being crazy, okay? So that frontal lobe part of your brain isn't even working yet. Let me show you the little tiny piece of that brain that is working. I'm going to ask you a question. Your brain is going to think of an answer super fast and you're going to shout it out as soon as the last word comes out of my mouth. The answer that you shout back at me is going to come from your frontal lobe. This is the little tiny piece that is working, okay? Here we go, get ready. Ice cream, good or gross? <laughs> There's always one kid that says good, right? <laughs> Probably the kid that said poop earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't look in their lunchbox. All right. Students, when I said the word ketchup ice cream, 99.9% .9 of you said gross. Here's how you figured it out. When I said ketchup ice cream, this frontal lobe did this. As soon as I said the word ketchup, it immediately grabbed the flavor of ketchup. When I said the word ice cream, it grabbed whatever flavor ice cream you like, slammed it together inside your head, said, gross, not going to work. You are the only creature on the planet that will do that. No other animal on the planet, no other creature can do that. Dogs can do it, cats can do it, horses can do it. Even dolphins that are unbelievably intelligent cannot do that. That's the part of the brain that is working. All right, students, here's the part of the brain that is not working, and I'm nervous to watch the hands that go up. How many of you in this room have ever done something unbelievably dangerous, crazy, or really dumb with your best friend? There it is. Yeah. Yes. Hands down. How many of you have ever looked at your best friend all excited and said these words? <laughs> we almost died. And like you were happy about that? Ah. Hands down. How many of you have ever had an adult come running up on you, look at you in the face and holler, why'd you do that? And like, I don't know. <laughs> Teachers, frontal lobe, not to working, okay? Students, here's what this amazing part of the brain does that yours is not doing very much and why drugs and alcohol are so dangerous for you. Right here, right here. Let me show you where that part of the brain is right there. Everybody take your right hand, hold it up like this. Hold your finger up like this. Place it directly over your right eye. Feel how that's kind of hard and kind of soft right there? If you were to go all the way back and touch your brain, don't do it, painful. Put your hands down, put them down, yeah. <laughs> you guys, I was at that elementary school a couple days ago, there's that one kid that can't sit still, you know, and he's like, <laughs> Got an owie, <laughs> get the nuts. Okay, right behind your right eye right there is what's called the frontal lobe part of your brain. Now this is what this part of the brain does for you. This part of the brain helps you to predict the future, okay? Predict the future. Every single human being on the planet uses this part of the brain. If you got to school on time today, that's the part of the brain that got you here on time. If you're going to the movies tomorrow and you got to be there at 3 o'clock and you get there at 2.52, that's the part of the brain that'll get you there on time. Predict the future. Let me give you a real simple one. Okay, get ready to predict the future. Here we go. Big, huge hill goes down like this, okay? I'm standing at the very top of that hill and all I'm wearing is tennis shoes and a bathing suit. <laughs> yeah. Don't picture that in your frontal lobe, okay? <laughs> Your brain had to go like this. The beach and <laughs> Chewbacca, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm at the top of the hill wearing tennis shoes and a bathing suit. Get ready to tell me what's going to happen. Left-hand side over here is my very best friend. Right-hand side right here 
brand new shopping cart. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. I look at my best friend and I say, dude, I want to ride down this hill as quickly as I possibly can. My best friend looks at me all excited and he says, okay, right? <laughs> so me and my little tennis shoes and bathing suit, I get in the shopping cart. My best friend grabs the shopping cart and he goes like this. He goes, you sure you want to do this? I'm like, yep. He goes, all right, get ready. Here we go. One, <laughs> two, get ready, dude. Here we go. I'm sorry, it's my best friend. It's probably going to look a lot more like this. <laughs> Uno, andale, <right>? dos, arriba, right? <laughs> and thres. <clears throat> and he pushes that shopping cart down that hill. I go flying down that hill, 35 miles an hour. I got the wind blowing through the hair on my head, hair on my arms, and I am flying down this hill. I look up. <clears throat> when I look up, I got tears coming out of my eyes. I'm going so fast. Get ready. When I look up, I see that there's a garbage truck parked in the bike lane. If I don't stop my little shopping cart, I will die. What you did right there is you predicted the future. Students, here is the problem with alcohol. Somebody my size, and has, somebody my size, not your size, my size, all it takes is one and a half. One and a half cans of beer within the course of an hour, and I start to lose that part of my brain. One and a half cans of beer within the course of an hour, I'm not going to look drunk, I'm not going to act drunk, I'm not going to feel drunk. There's not going to be any signs of me being intoxicated. I will walk straight, talk straight, carry on a normal conversation. I could walk to the top of the hill, no problem. Get in a shopping cart, no problem. Fly down that hill, no problem. Pop something up in front of me real quick, big problem. The very first thing you lose when somebody drinks alcohol is the ability to make a quick decision. Students, here's what's terrible about this. This is why drunk drivers kill people right here. Drunk drivers heading towards a light that is green and the brain says, let's go. Light changes yellow, boop, and what they found out about drunk drivers is drunk drivers have a tendency to speed up towards yellow lights. Boop, light changes red, but it's too fast for the brain that can't predict the future. Drunk driver goes to the red light and kills people. So the thing is, understand for you guys, the drinking age is 21 because right now your liver cannot process alcohol. If your age group puts alcohol inside themselves, it stays swirling around for a long time. How many of you have heard of e-cigarettes, jewels, and vapes? Everybody heard of these? All right. Hands down. Let me find out if you are where the tobacco companies are hoping where you are, okay? Raise your hand if you've heard this before. Just heard it. You don't have to believe it, but just heard it. How many of you have heard e-cigarettes, jewels, or vapes are better for you than smoking regular cigarettes? Who's heard that? Yikes. All right, hands down. How many of you have heard that e-cigarettes, jewels, and vapes are worse for you than smoking regular cigarettes? All right, hands down. How many of you have heard that e-cigarettes, jewels, and vapes, there's some that contain no nicotine? No nicotine inside them. All right, hands down. How many of you have heard that they all contain nicotine inside them? Yeah, okay, hands down. You guys, and I hate to say this, are right where the tobacco companies want you to be. Because if you are confused or don't fully understand the information, then what your brain does, because the frontal lobe isn't working yet, you go, how can caramel apple hurt you? How can a flavor like mango or you know, electric bubble gum hurt you? Because your brain is gonna default to good stuff. So the problem is the tobacco companies are totally lying to you. This year, just this year in the United States, 430, I'm sorry, 484,000 people are going to die every year from something that is tobacco related. 484,000 people are going to die. What that works out to is 1,300 people a day or 54 people every hour or right around one person every minute. You're going to be in this room in here for about 50 minutes. While we are in here, somewhere in the United States, about 45 people are going to die from th something that is cigarette or tobacco related. 
Now, what the tobacco companies have said, what the jewels companies have said, is they said, oh my gosh, we're losing 484,000 people every year, 1,300 people a day, one person every minute. They said, this is bad for us because these people aren't buying cigarettes anymore because they're dead. So what we have to do is we have to find new smokers. This is why they're looking at you guys. This is why e-cigarettes, jewels, and vapes are directly connected to you guys. They're not marketing to somebody like me. They're going after you guys. What is the big chemical they put inside e-cigarettes, jewels, and vapes? Shout it out. Nicotine. Nicotine, right. Nicotine. Nicotine. All right, let's say we ran this little contest, okay? I told everybody, go home, come back on Monday with something in your house that has nicotine in it. But here's the rules. It cannot be a tobacco product. Please listen up. It can't be cigarettes. It can't be an e-cigarette. It can't be a jewel. It can't be a, ba a vape. It can't be nicotine patches. It can't be nicotine gum. It can't be chewing tobacco. And it can't be that one brother-in-law that smokes all the time, okay? So it can't be a family member. It has to be a product that has nicotine in it. Somebody raise your hand. Where could you find nicotine in your house? And I'm going to safely say almost every single one of you has it. Yes? Medicine? Oh, I love that answer. That's a great place to start. It would be terrible if it's in medicine, but I love that answer. You'll find out. Yes? Tide pods? Tide pods. Are those Tide pods? No. <laughs> no. But great answer. <laughs> yes? Something that's not a tobacco product. Any eighth graders back there have a guess? Yes, white shirt right. Your refrigerator? Mmm. I love that answer. Probably close to the refrigerator, but not inside. Oh, if I say white shirt, I don't know who I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, the guy in the back, top row, black shirt. In what? Toothpaste? Oh my gosh, that'd be terrible, but I love that answer, man. One more, yes. In what? In the cabinet. Now, check this out. You would find nicotine, get ready, inside bug spray. Bug spray. Bug spray. Nicotine, nicotine is one of the strongest poisons known to man. If you looked on the back of a can of Raid, you would find this little product that begins with N-I-C or ends in T-I-N-E. Nicotine is one of the strongest poisons that's out there. How many of you have heard of our bee population dying at a super fast rate and people are worried about this? Wow, okay, hands down. One of the reasons why our bees are dying so fast is because the tobacco companies are making tobacco plants that are so high in nicotine, when bees land on them to pollinate them, they absorb this poison and they die. So the thing is, nicotine's one of the strongest poisons known to man. When I was a seven-year-old kid, we lived way out in the country, and in the corner of our barn, uh, I catch this big, huge cockroach. You know, the kind you can put a saddle on and like ride it around, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know why, as a seven-year-old boy, I'm playing with a can of Raid. I don't think my mom gave it to me. You know, like, I'm Mijito, go play with this can of Raid, right? Yeah. Don't spray yourself in the face again, you know. But I remember trying this little experiment out on this cockroach. Little cockroach. You're looking at me, I'm looking at him, and he's begging for his life, right? And he's like, please, senor, don't kill me. Right? No. I don't know why I made him sound Hispanic. I'm sorry. But then I look at this little cockroach and I go, not today, my friend. Today's the day you die. I sprayed a tiny amount on this cockroach. The little cockroach goes crazy. He takes off running. Right? Now, I'm sure everybody in this room has sprayed a bug before and it takes off running, right? Now i got to spray him again, right? Do I spray him with a little bit this time or a lot? A lot. Do I spray with a lot or a lot, a lot? A lot. A lot, right? Picture seven-year-old Ray running after this cockroach in the garage, like shh, shh, shh. Right? I finally get him in the other corner of the garage, and I'm like, shh, right? Little cockroach is swimming through Ray, doing backflips. Finally, his little leg shake, and he dies. 
What killed that little cockroach was a form of nicotine. Please remember this. Nicotine is a poison. Nicotine kills because it, what it does is it goes inside, it goes inside the bug, it lands on the bug, and it separates out body parts. Everybody say this with me. Nicotine, Nicotine is, is a, a poison. Nicotine is a poison, one of the strongest poisons out there. Check this out. If you took one pack of cigarettes and you removed all of the nicotine out of it, you'd have a little over a drop. Put that drop on me, it would be enough to kill me. It would separate, my body parts would not communicate with each other, so my brain wouldn't communicate with my heart, my heart wouldn't communicate with my lungs, my lungs wouldn't communicate with my feet, and I would eventually die. Here's why nicotine is so dangerous for you guys. Take your hand, hold it up like this. Hold up your finger like this. Place it directly in the center of your forehead. If you were to go knuckle deep back in your forehead, you're gonna hit a little button called a go button, G-O, go button. Move your finger over to your left eye. Right over your left eye is a stop button. Go button, stop button, go button, stop button, put your hands down. Let me show you why it's so dangerous. Anybody in this room ever had somebody jump out and scare you big time? Who's had that happen? Nice, okay, hands down. All right, let me get some information. When somebody jumps out and scares you, where's my screamers at? Who screams when they get scared? Where are my runners at when they get scared? And last but not least, where are my punchers at? Who punches when they get scared? All right, hands down. Here's what happens. When somebody jumps out and scares you, and you scream, run, jump, or punch, what happens is they hit your go button and you go crazy. My son started to scare me. I told my son, I said, son, you've got to stop scaring dad. He looks at me and he goes, why? I said, son, let me tell you a little secret about dad. Audience, who do you think I am? Screamer, runner, or puncher? puncher? Here's what would happen. My son would jump out and he would scare me. As soon as he would jump out and scare me, he would hit my go button. Anytime your go button gets hit, you're going to have some kind of reaction. My son would jump out and scare me and it would turn into one of those slow motion scenes. Right? Without thinking about it, I'd go. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'd watch my fist go and pass my face like, no! I can't punch my own kid! Again! <laughs> According to the court, you know. And so, when, I, when my son would jump out and scare me, he would hit my go button. But the reason why I didn't punch him is because my go button sent the signal to my stop button. <laughs> Students, listen to this. Here's the terrible thing about nicotine. Nicotine is a product that separates out body parts. Nicotine goes into the system, and the tobacco companies know this, and it hits the go button, but it will not allow a signal to be sent to the stop button. This is why it's so easy to start smoking an e-cigarette jewel or vape, so hard to stop. If there is anybody in this room that is using an e-cigarette jeweler vape, please watch this. How many students in this room know somebody who has tried to stop smoking regular cigarettes two or three times and they cannot do it? If you're using an e-cigarette jeweler vape, please look around. Hold your hands up high so everybody can see. Hands down. The reason why they cannot stop is because it goes into the brain and it hits the go button, but it will not allow a signal to be sent to the stop button. Here's what's terrible. E-cigarettes, jewels, or vapes are actually way worse for you than smoking regular cigarettes. Everybody in this room at one time or another is taking a hot shower on a cold day, right? All right. If you jump into a hot shower and out on a cold day really fast, what happens to your mirror in the bathroom? It gets foggy, right? If you take that three hour long hot shower where you turn into one of those hot dogs at the gas station and you're just going around in a circle, you know, and you're thinking about every argument you've ever had but now you're winning them, you know? When you take that three hour long hot shower, what happens to your entire bathroom? It gets foggy. Alright, check it out. If I took one square of toilet paper and I threw it in a dry mirror, what's going to happen to that square of toilet paper? It's going to fall down, right? If I take one square of toilet paper and I throw it in a mirror after that three hour long hot shower, what's gonna happen? It's gonna stick. Understand this, because the air that comes out of the back of an uh, e-cigarette jeweler vape is at 450 degrees, when you suck in on that, 
It's like taking a hot shower on a cold day and it does so much damage to your lungs and it allows all of those chemicals to stick inside your lungs. When I was in school, sitting on the floor, just like you guys, and they were talking about cigarettes, three cigarettes is what they said it would take to, be form, to form an addiction. This is where the tobacco companies owned us. For you guys, because of the amount of nicotine they put in e-cigarette tools and vapes, they're saying you can develop an addiction in one day. If somebody uses half a pod, they pretty much have an addiction. For you guys, understand this, alcohol, e-cigarettes, jewels, or vapes, really detrimental. The younger you are when you start doing a drug, the, uh, the younger you are when you start doing a drug, the quicker you become addicted to it. You guys, my name is Ray Enrique Eduardo Quintana Quintana Sano. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Goodbye.